Now, before we dive deeper into Oclo's mysteries and the naturally occurring reactions, let's take a moment to understand why splitting atoms actually releases energy in the first place. And honestly, it's a good question. It sounds like a simple question, but it's really not a simple question at all. I want you to imagine that you have a big, heavy atom like uranium. It is a very large nucleus, and so it isn't really entirely stable. It has positive protons that are all repelling each other, but the strong nuclear force is barely holding the whole thing together. Now, if we split that atom, we're giving the nucleus a little bit of a push. Suddenly, our uranium atom splits into two smaller atoms who are in lower energy states, which means they're more stable. Now, here's the punchline. The difference in the energy from the large atom, which was unstable and what we call high potential energy, to two smaller atoms, which by definition have to be more stable because they're smaller and it's not as radioactive because it's not as unstable, that's a lower energy state. And the difference between that high potential energy for the first big heavy atom and the smaller lower energy state of the two smaller atoms, that energy has to go somewhere. And that goes into the energy of moving everything around. That's the energy we see in a nuclear reaction or in a nuclear bomb. So the energy is released because of the difference in the energy from the unstable atom initially to the two smaller, more stable atoms at the end. Basically, that energy release means that the products after the reaction happen, they fly apart at high speed. Basically, the nucleus of the product atoms are packed tighter together and they're held together better in a more stable way. And their nuclear, the nucleus is moving very, very fast afterwards because the difference in energy goes into the movement of those daughter nuclei after the reaction happens. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.